We've put this training video together to aid the instruction for aviation fuel training. The elements we will cover today will be from the receipt of the fuel right through to the actual wing of the aircraft to ensure quality on specification, safe fuel is loaded on board the aircraft. We'll cover elements from the road bridger, we'll look at the quality checks, we'll look at storage through to fil filtration in the storage. We'll also look at the vehicles and their special filters, valves, gauges and safety devices. We'll also interview key personnel, refuelers themselves and ultimately pilots. As we see here, the actual road bridger tanker is being delivered into the depot and the first thing the driver will do will get out of the cab and settle the fuel for at least 10 minutes. Varies from country to country from 5 minutes to 10 minutes but what he'll do he'll check his receipt and certificates of quality from the actual terminal and the refinery and then he will carry out his quality checks before delivering the fuel into the storage. This is a typical fuel farm setup. Behind me now we actually have a road bridge truck that's actually delivering fuel into the storage. There's many sorts of tests that have to be carried out prior to the offload of the fuel into the, through the filters and into the storage tank. If we look at the road bridge now, uh, the quality checks have been completed, the fuel is being offloaded and the quality checks are actually carried out at this point here, the quality control point where we can see the visi jar. Sort of checks we'll be looking for here is density checks, the clear and bright, any sediment, suspended water, and also confirming that it's within specification for Jet A1 fuel. Once that's confirmed and conductivity has been checked to make sure there is static levels are at the correct level, then the fuel then will go be passed and offloaded through the first inlet filter. The first filter that the fuel will actually see prior to being received into the storage tanks. Very important that the differential pressure gauges are monitored to ensure that the filters are working correctly and not being blocked. Once the levels are correct, the fuel will then pass into the receiving tanks. From the receiving tanks, it will settle to make sure that the actual sediment is settled and not, not actually still within the actual fuel itself. And then we will move then to the outlet filter. The outlet filter then cleans the fuel for its second stage before being loaded actually into the refuelling truck or Bowser. Quality control checks are very important throughout the fuel system and what we're going to look at, it, at here is a receipt control check. So this is when the fuel is actually delivered to the fuel farm prior to being received into the storage tanks we want to check that there's actually a Jet A1 fuel within specification, no water, dirt or sediment and static uh, conductivity is at the correct levels. Jet A1 uh, density ranges between 0.775 and 0.840 but as the visit jar here is, is filling there is a vortex that's being created. Uh, at the bottom of the vortex, if there is any dirt, rust, particles, sediment will be seen at the bottom of the actual vortex. Also, when it settles, you will see suspended water, which is the little bubbles or little water particles. Now, this fuel is very clear. If it had got water in it, it would start to look hazy. Not a problem. What we want to do is, uh, if this sample fails, then we draw another sample off until we're confident through the testing procedure that there isn't any water contained still in the fuel. Water comes from different processes, refining processes, condensation from the truck. Like today is quite a warm day and if the road bridger truck has been traveling a long distance, it will have formed some condensation in the inside of the truck which will create water. You see we're nearly at the top. What we are also must ensure is that any samples that we're drawing from the storage, we purge enough fuel through the lines to ensure it is a true representative sample 
of the product in the tank or the road bridger. So we have a nice sample there into the sample glass. Neil will now use the hydrometer. You can see the paper scale at the top of the hydrometer. You read a hydrometer from top of the scale down, not from the bottom up. This is like confirming that we've got the correct density, so it is Jet A1. But we also have to introduce te the temperature of the fuel to correct temperature or density reading at 15 degrees C. Now we'll now take the temperature of the fuel. Quite a nice day today, quite a warm day, so expecting a nice temperature. And the density does change with the, the outside air temperature, so winter, summer, spring and autumn, you will get different densities. That's 19.5 degrees C. We have a correction chart. The fuel will, be, will have been tested at the terminal and we have to ensure that the fuel falls within the correct correction chart from the receipt to delivery. You're allowed 0 0.030 of difference maximum. Okay. So you have the temperature of the fuel 19.5 and the density of fuel corrected at 15 degrees. As long as it falls in between 0 0.030 then we, uh, we are good to receive the fuel. I said before, one of the important checks is uh, water detector capsules, detects if there's any water. These have a six months shelf life, used with a syringe. Important that you actually draw a minimum of five millilitres of fuel through the syringe and through the capsule. If there is any water, the capsule will start to turn green sometimes little green specks which uh, indicates there actually what you have water actually in the fuel hopefully this will be a good clear representative sample nice way of testing it but there you can see now you should have greeny speckled wherever we're transferring fuel down lines through hoses we will build, have a build-up of static so the static levels are called Pico Siemens and it must range the maximum range minimum is 50 Pico Siemens to 600 Pico Siemens. There are checks that you have to do on the storage tanks themselves daily, weekly, quarterly, six monthly and annual checks of the actual storage tanks but the sort of daily and weekly checks we're looking at is the tank vents themselves to make sure that there's no debris birds are nesting so the actual vents are clean and free. Also a very important item on here for safety wise, particularly since the Bunsfield incident, is high alarms. They must be tested to ensure that the tanks aren't overfilled. So that's a very important check. Another one is actually the floating suction. The floating suction is there so that the actual suction arm that delivers the fuel to the refuelers is actually floating within the mid section of the fuel and the fuel is not sucked from the bottom of the tank where debris, dirt and sediment may be collecting. Filtration system on the actual fuel bowsers have two types of filters. Filter water separators which are presently 5th edition filters and also monitor filters which are presently 6th edition. As we see here we've actually got filter water separators. Very important that we know how many elements are actually in there and also the change dates. Maximum three years for filter water separators, 12 months for monitors. Also looking and moving around the vehicle itself. Fire extinguishers, very important. We have six monthly checks on the fire extinguishers. So records should be kept for the fire extinguishers. Interlocks on the vehicles, very important safety device to prevent driverways while hooked up to the aircraft. So any ho hoses or doors or hatches that have micro switches will actually activate the interlocks to prevent the brakes from actually being released. So the orange light flashes when the interlocks are operating and also the red light is there for an interlock breakaway in case of emergencies. Visage are for sampling actually at while the truck's being refilled or at re refueling is important that the actual sight glass is being kept clean and free of dirt where we actually do the water detector capsule tests 
and also the visual check to ensure that it's clean, bright and within specification. Another very important check is continuity of the bonding lead. So bonded to the vehicle and then to the bonding lead and red for fail and then if we have continuity we have the green light, green for go. Must be below 25 ohms if you're using a multimeter. Hose life on refuelers, 10 years maximum with, that includes two years shelf life. So down the ribbon, the actual hose, you will see the month and the date of the actual manufacture of the hose. Also, they started to move from first quarter to year or the quarter of the year. Also very important device is the differential pressure gauge, which measures the pressure of the inlet of the fuel to the filter to the outlet. So it tells you or gives you an indication if the actual filter is starting to block. For filter water separators, maximum DP is 15 PSI. For monitor filters, it's maximum of 22 PSI. They must also be corrected to maximum achievable flow rates for the particular vehicle. Other aspects we're looking at is delivery meters must be calibrated every, every six months and must be sealed as well. So records, documentation, must be kept for the actual delivery meters themselves. The vehicle we have behind us is a hydrant dispenser, basically a fuel bowser without a storage tank. These are used at airports that have hydrant pipes running to the actual aircraft stands. They're actually hooked up to the actual hydrant system themselves directly, and then the fuel just flows through the metering valves and filters to the actual wing of the aircraft. So two types, mobile, Bowser and hydrant dispenser. Maximum refueling pressure at the wing is 50 PSI for when the refueling is taking place. Some of the very important checks that have to be carried out as well on the dispenser and the fuel bowsers themselves is hose end pressure control valve test or inline pressure control valve test or both. Uh, as we see here, also this is the main hose. Also a very important test that we have to do and check is a hose end strainer, which is basically a gauze filter that's in there that's 60 micromesh maximum tolerance that has to be physically and visually checked on a regular basis. Uh, a very important aspect to the fuel process and the operation is correct and accurate documentation. As we can see here, Paul is doing all the receipt documentation for the fuel that's just come into the depot. So recertification, quality checks, delivery notes, and the information he's taken from his quality check to ensure we have Jet A1, clean, bright, and on specification. These are just part of the documentation that need to be filled in on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, six monthly, and annual basis. So there is a lot of documentation to keep. As we can see, uh, there's a lot of folders to the different tankers for their daily checks, weekly checks. Also a very important one is their serviceability. So annual checks for the chassis and brakes. And then back in the main office, we will have storage tank inspection and cleaning documentation, filter changes, for instance, filter water separators, maximum three years, filter monitors every 12 months. So, uh, as you can see, very important part of the process. What we're looking there is for quantities in the different tanks, so electronically monitored to ensure we've got the correct amount and the correct capacity or space for the fuel to be delivered into the tanks themselves. Our main aim is to deliver um, clean, bright and on specification fuel to our customer in the aviation industry, it's, uh, it's critical. So the fuel is checked um, at, at the wing for uh, any water content um, and its um, conductivity prior to delivery, it's critical that those, uh, all those meet our uh, quality control criteria. Prior to any refuelling uh, taking place, the aircraft is bonded with the fuel truck to uh, ensure equipotential bonding between the two vehicles. Certainly here we, are, we ensure that we make contact with any crew or engineer that might, is in charge of fuel on the aircraft 
uh, and we actually require a signature prior to, to fueling. Uh, priority is obviously the safety of the aircraft, the personnel around it and the persons on the aircraft uh, and to reduce the, um, the incident from increasing. So the, the, the main reason that we, uh, first of all, we check the fuel quantity and the quality because certain countries have different standards. For example, in Africa, China, uh, mainline Europe are wide apart. Uh, the emphasis on fuel and the quality of the fuel for us as flight crew and engineers to, is to make sure that you know, the safety of flight is never compromised during a flight. The worst thing for fuel for us as pilots is uh, watering the fuel. The other uh, abstract of fuel quantity and quality for me, I'm a licensed engineer as well, is that low fuel grade may not have water in, but it may not have the lubricant quantity required for engine fuel driven pumps. Uh, there's been significant uh, evidence that low quality fuel will damage fuel pumps. Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney and General Electric all back this data. So it's just really important that we get a good quality fuel. The other aspect for any fueling, whether it's uh, a small light aircraft or a 747, is we as pilots need to know how much fuel to take for the intended trip. If we take too much fuel and we're going to a, it's a short flight, maybe our landing weight then is in above the aircraft manufacturer's recommended max landing weight. So it's important to us to know how much fuel we're going to take to the trip. It's one of our pre-flight duties. I'll have a number in my head of how many liters I'm going to take for the day. Even though modern aircraft are all sophisticated with auto refueling, the emphasis is on, is on the pilot in command to make sure that he's taking the required fuel, not the fueler. So if we have a fault with a, a refueling system, for example, and I've just told him, oh, go ahead, it's on auto and it fails, I could end up potentially with a, a max gross weight aircraft only for a two hour flight. So it's really important that I have a number in my head, I communicate that with the handler and the fueler that he's only going to put X amount of litres on board and should it go over that he's going to come and check with me. So that's the communication that needs to happen and that's standard procedure for most flight crews. The other procedure is we'll take a fuel sample if it's not an audited fueler that we have regular business with. Today we've covered many aspects of the fueling operation from the actual receipt of the fuel, through the depot, through the equipment, right to an actual refuel. We've interviewed key personnel from the refueling staff to pilots themselves to look at how safety and quality of the fuel is paramount to the safety of the operation.